Hey everybody, um, what's up? So today's gonna be a big one and it might be a long one. So we'll get through this as quick as we can. But we're going to do finish up our uh, CTLR playlist here. And a lot's been requesting this one and it's probably very, very important if you're running a set of arcade guns with your cabinet. I wanna show you how to run everything on your arcade cabinets without your guns messing anything up or anything else messing up configuration of your guns. Now, this is not going to be a complete setup as I'm showing you how to get your guns to work and everything. This is under the assumption that you already know how to map your guns, that whichever gun program that you're using, whether it's Sendin, which I use, I'm using for this example, a gun for IR, whatever else you have, it's the other assumption that you already know how to get those guns working for MAME. So all this is going to go over is show you how to run the other non-gun games on the same MAME instance without controls conflicting. Now what I have, I have a two-player control deck. I'll be running two X input controllers and I want to have two of my Sendin light guns. So this is one of them. There are ones down there. I want to run it to make sure that everything will always stay in their proper order. So we're not going to have any conflictions and I'm sorry. Everything's going to work just fine for you. Um, uh, follow along and we're going to get this running extremely for you. And you're not going to have any issues or have to worry about MAME flopping everything over. All right, so now I have my X input player one and player two set up as three and four. Now that's just going to be the device name. So just whenever your computer sees the X input, your Xbox style controller, it's going to give it the name player one. It's not going to differentiate between the actual devices. It's just going to assume the first one that it reads is going to be the player one. Okay, now next we want to do the uh, player one and player two. If you're running an arcade panel, if you just want to use X input controllers, then you're done with that point. Okay, and of course, be sure to save what you've done so far so it's not going to mess up. All right, get back into your MAME. And now I need to figure out which one is which as far as the joysticks goes. So I want to go down here to number four. All right, so I know this right here, I want to be on player one. So I'm just going to copy it, that device. Get back into here and come up here to my quotations. And go all the way to player one. And that joy code is one. So I know that's going to tell me it's going to be player one. Paste. And unlike this, you just leave all of this in here. Save, and they're just going to do the same thing again for our second player. So we'll hit this one here. All right. So now I want to copy that device number. And we're just going to repeat the process here. Comes here, player two. Quotation, no quotation. All right, now we go ahead and confirm everything's in a place. So I got my two arcade sticks right here. If you're running four arcade sticks, then you can just put those in place of your X inputs. Uh, these are going to be my gun codes. So just want to make sure that at this point you have your uh, CTRL file in proper order. Now we can just save it, minimize it, close out your main if it's up, and then we can go ahead and reopen it. All right, general settings, go to your input devices. Now I can tell for my first two, one and two, this is going to be my arcade sticks and in the right order. One's where it should be. Arcade stick two is where it should be. My X input player one, 
that's where it should be. Number player four controller, that's where it should be. Now I know my guns are one and two, so we'll go to one. And that should register for my black one. It does. Come to player two. That's going to be my red one. Okay, so now we have these in set order. Oh, and one more thing, and I should have done this way earlier. Uh, make sure in your main UI that your uh, CTRL does have the name of this configuration file. So go ahead and copy the name of that. Go to your main INI. Line 129, 130. It'll be in that range. And I already had that changed for video, but we we'll just copy whatever is here. If nothing's there, it's blank by default. Paste it. File save. All right. Now, as far as that goes, we're set to go. Open up your MAME again. Now, the fun part. The actual input configuration. Okay, hey, uh, first check your input device options and just make sure yours looks something like this. Depending on your gun and how they have it set up in the main UI, you may need to change these mouse to light gun. Let me see if I can do that. Yeah, so light gun, mouse. Most things here are going to be at mouse. Um, that's how Synod has it set up. Um, I don't know how Gun for R does it. I don't know how Blamco is going to do it when it comes out. But just follow those instructions and uh, set these up per however they have you do it. But it's how mine's set up. So if you're running Synod guns, then this should be how it you need to set it up. Now we need to get into our input assignments. Now this is going to be the uh, tricky part. I'll show you how to get this set up. When it comes to your gun on the uh, button, there's only three buttons that you really need. And however you have these set up, they should go as trigger be your left click button. Reload off screen is going to be your right mouse button. And then your third button should be space or I have my map to middle button but that part you're going to have to do on your own inside your gun program since it has its program and the button assignments I know gun for R does aim track does I'm sure every other gun is going to have its own program that you have to map that to and then once you get that part set up we come to your controls here um ascending users make sure your border is up Okay, as far as the arrows goes, it's already mapped order on the gun. The gun goes by the keyboard. So let's we'll go ahead and come down to your button one, two, and three. Now you want to need to map the first three buttons up for both your arcade as well as your gun. So you want to go arcade input first and then your gun. And um, player one, two, and three, depending how you are mapped out, if you're a street fighter type of person, you like your fighting games best, then your one, two, and three for your arcade is always going to be your top three buttons. And that's just going to be light punch, medium punch, strong punch. That's the quickest way I can explain that. Then your bottom three are going to be your lot is going to be your kicks. And that would go in order with these. Light punch, medium punch, strong punch, light kick, medium kick that kick if you're more traditional then you're going to think in terms of xbox style layout so this would be your button a button b x y l and r or snes it's just these but reverse and that's the traditional way of doing it so i want to do this in the traditional method so that being said, we'll uh, start off on the arcade input first. So that would be my A, my lower left button. 
And that's what yeah, that's your primary button. Now the next input is going to be the gun. So of course, point at the screen and pull your trigger. And button that is not the button I need for this gun. So let me go ahead and go back on this. Let me uh, turn this off for a moment. Yeah, gun mapping can be a pain in the ass. Not gonna lie there. All right, so go ahead and get your gun set up. All right, now that should read as gun button number one. If it reads as two, that's reading as off screen trigger. And now do your arcade. Boy button three. And you gotta do it kind of quickly too between the two. There you go. So we're done correctly. You're going to have your arcade button along with the gun button. And I'll say gun one. Bring that up for now. Now y'all can see me again. Button two is going to be your off screen reload. And you can just point at the ground and pull the trigger. It'll come up as button number two. Then that's going to be your next arcade button. And um, your arcade button may read differently as mine. That just comes down to how you have it plugged into your to your encoder. Okay, now this is going to be as far as your arcade goes. Traditionally, it would be where your X button would be at. And this is going to be your third button, whatever you choose it to be. Me, I chose my, my mouse middle, and that's how it comes up. So I got one, two, and three for my gun. So player one is almost set up. We still got to do the access on it. So it's qu the quickest way you get there is just to go up, and it takes you all the way to these right here. The uh, only ones that we'll need is the uh, light gun itself and the AD stick. So I want to turn the slide off here so I can get this mapped right. And you only have to worry about your gun on this, so we can just get our gun pulled up, left to right, Y, up, up and down, I messed up on that one, so we can just go there, delete it, try again. You want steady hands on this, and then we go to light gun, and once again, All right, I want to delete that out. Delete that, try it one more time. There we go. Map this up. Now, even though for your gun, it still may already default to that, do that anyways, because we're going to come back to the default we're going to take all this mapping and we're going to place it onto our uh, CTR file. Um, that being said, we still need to map the rest of the buttons for your arcade. So we do have the gun set up. We still need to finish up the arcade one. All right, so come down here, and we'll go down here to player four, and this would be your Y button. This would be your left bumper, right bumper. And uh, these really don't need to remap, but we do need our start and select. Now, on this, you do need to leave that. If you're on send, then leave that as one and five, so you do want to make sure... That is still mapped as well because that's how the sending is going to read. How sending is going to read your coin and start if you're doing it from your gun. So, start, I just use mine. Start my arcade. I want to come over here and do it again on my keyboard. Got my coin. 
put it in my coin here. All right, and that is the button mapping for player one. Now we'll get out of this and do everything for player two. And we're just going to repeat what we did from the first one, except we're just going to use gun two now. All right, so I got my gun out here. It went into sleep mode. Enter, pull my trigger, gun one. I'm going traditional as well, so I have to do this. Will be my A button on my arcade. All right, again, off trigger, button two. That again, that'll be my B button from my arcade. Three is going to be uh, space. I think I have it mapped out as space on this. No, it's still mapped out as still mapped out as um, mouse middle. This will be your X on your arcade. All right, and then let's we'll go ahead and continue or finish up our mapping for the arcade unit here. So this will be Y. L, R, and then you can see the rest alone. Go down to our start and select again, two and six. So just want to make sure I have keyboard two set. My coin for player two on my arcade. I'm sorry, my start. And then do the same thing for a coin. Keyboard number six. And then point button on my arcade all right now we'll just go all the way down to our light gun controls down here okay and we want the 80 stick and the light gun so get your gun out we're just going to go left to right always want to make sure this reads at x or y by itself All right, don't want X plus because that would just make it go one direction. Try that again. That's definitely not right. So you may have to do this a few times to get it correct. All right, and that is almost it. <laughs> this will cover about 99% of the games, and we'll go over a few of the games that does need a little bit of extra love. So return to our previous menu, save your settings, always save your settings. All right, let's see, I want to go ahead and take this border off for now. Go to our uh, configuration folder. Go to the default. All right, and you just want to take everything from the port and go port to port. All right, right click and copy it. And then you want to go to our uh, CTRLR. And look for uh, this one right here, the uh, Gunjoy. Okay, go ahead and do a couple of lines. I want a space between map devices and my port. So make sure you're lined up underneath the map devices on the far left arrow. Hit paste. All right, see, this one's kind of over, so I'm just going to drag it back to line it up. All right, now everything's all lined up. Our buttons configuration all looks good. We're going to hit save. All right, now let's go ahead and open up MAME and get this tested out. All right, so a good one to try is a point blank. 
hit my key, hit this, that's my input settings. Okay, and I can tell my gun one's there, gun two's here, everything's good. I'm on sending, so I gotta put up my stupid border. All right, so let me get my uh, coins in. All right, so that's gun one. Gun two. I don't know if y'all can see me on this. All right, so gun two is going good. Good one's good. All right. I want to get out. Now let's try a non-gun game. All right, uh, another thing that we need to do, I forgot about this. Go to our general settings and we'll need to go to uh, input assignments again. We'll need to go to other controls and we'll need to set our coins up here and our start. And this is going to be for your arcade panel. So if you're using all our arcade for one through four, we'll do it through players one through four. Uh, if you just have a, a two-player arcade set like I do, then you'll definitely need to do it for one and two, one and two. So this will be your player start. Oh, and do make sure that you do keep the keyboard one because your guns will also share that same input. So we'll start with one here. Do it again on your arcade panel. All right. Player two start, same thing. Keyboard two. Player two, and then same thing for coin. Five. Oops, don't need it twice. Five. Coin. Coin two. Okay, I'll go ahead and escape out of here. Turn previous menu, save your settings, and we want to move uh, those inputs over to uh, the CT LRL. Let's go to our configs, default, hit yes, and you'll find those under. Uh, the UI should be UI. Okay, so you want to come down and you want to see where it says start one, start two, coin one, coin two. Those will be the ones that you'll want to grab. All right, so we're going to come down and open up our four player X input gun joy. We're going to go to the bottom of this and right by the port, we're going to hit enter and be lined up directly with the uh, outer left area on the bottom. We're going to paste it. Okay, and now we have our start one, start two, our coin one and coin two configuration saved. Everything's lined up. We're going to hit that. All right, now I can minimize it or close it. And I'm actually going to delete all this. Uh, I know that's a scary thing to do, but trust me, everything is saved in that CTRLR. So we are going to be swingly great with this. Now, the good thing about saving things in that CTRL file is you can transfer that from build to build. You can just copy it, paste it, throw it on whatever MAME you're running. 
No need to reconfigure anything. So now let's uh, test out a non light gun game and make sure we can actually get loaded in. All right, so got my ROM check going on. Oh, good times. All right, player one's in, player two's in. I got my controller. We're good. So I can safely play my non light gun games. Let's pick another light gun game here. <clears throat> got these out. Get some coins in. And as far as the base of it goes, that's it. That's all you got to do. Before we leave, though, there is a few games that do need some special love. So I want to make sure that we get to that first. And we're going to also use the uh, yeah, CTRR to speed up this as well. So we're going to go to Big Buck Hunter. If you're watching in mind that previously, we can also go by the source file to uh, say the controls. Because for every Buck Hunter game, you're going to have to change the pump action. It reads as button three and not player two. So you have to do that in every game. But to keep yourself from having to do that between every game, we'll actually use the iteagle.cpp. So I just open up a big Buck Hunter game. Doesn't matter which one. Let's start it up. Pull this up. All right. And as you can see right through here, that says button three, and that should be button number two. So all we're going to do is remap this. Get your player one gun out. Pull the trigger. There we go. Now I have it fixed for this game. Escape out of here. Escape out. Close the stupid border. Come to your config, open up your uh, BBVH, and we want to copy this port. Actually, we want to copy all of this from system down to system. And I'll show you why. Copy it, close it, CTRL, open up our gun joy, and we're going to go under here on system, and we're going to Enter, get below system. We're going to paste what we just copied. All right, I want to delete this because I don't need that there. The only thing I want is my input. I'll drag that back. Make sure this input's lined up with that input. Get rid of this warning. Okay, now if we leave it as is right now with the BBH, that's only going to save it for Buck Hunter. But I want this to save for all my Buck Hunter games, and they all run on the same source. So I forgot the source of it, so let's go ahead and pull it up real quick. Click on Big Buck Hunter, and it's IT Eagle, so it's eagle.cpp. All right, so we're just going to replace the name of it, BBH with IT Eagle dot CPP. If you don't have that CPP in there, it's not going to work. So just FYI there. All right, now to show it's going to work, we'll pick a different Buck Hunter game. We'll do Call of the Wild. You can see that it's still a Eagle CPP. Open it. Come down here to input settings, and right as you can see, it's still marked as two now. So I know my reload's fixed there. And we can go here. Let's 
and it's saved there. Now, I do remember though, whenever you play Buck Cutter game, you will need to set your uh, alignment, and I believe you just hit F2 or F4, and just go to gun calibration. So you will need to set your gun calibration for Buck Hunter games. Uh, another game, I believe, is Time Crisis. So let's go ahead and get into Time Crisis. Now, it says red doesn't work, but Time Crisis 2 does work. It just may run a little bit slow. Let's open this up. Get into my input settings. Okay, and you have your foot pedal. So it looks like it's done correctly here, but for some guns it may not map correctly so if it does you just make the same change through here all right and I have it set there get out of it get back into your config it goes for time crisis we're just going to grab this copy it actually, I actually want to make sure I'm Right where I need to be on that. So I don't want it. I want to make sure it copies correctly when I do it. There we go. Copy it. Go to your gun joy config. We're going to go with system under system. I want to paste it. Bring the system back because it's offline. Do do get rid of my UI warnings. I know some of this does seem like a lot of unnecessary work right now, but trust me, once you get this set up, you never have to worry about messing with your buttons again. And we have that saved here. All right, and everyone, that is it. Now, there are going to be uh, maybe some other games that do need some extra love outside of this, but hopefully I've showed you enough to where you can get that done and started on your own. Go ahead and finish up with some Time Crisis. Get my border up. My quarter's in. Time. Stage one, because you know that's that's the only stage that y'all play and ever do. All right. Anyways, everyone, that is it. I hope this helped y'all out. And again, you know, thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. Hope you learned something today. If anything, always like, share, subscribe. You know the routine. And I will see you later. Bye.